CataractCoach.com, measure the capsular axis in a highly myopic eye. What do you think may be a small capsular axis can end up being just about perfect. Look how big the white to white measurement is. This is a 2.75 keratome and it looks very tiny. And the white to white means that the cornea fills the entire fixation ring. This is a very big eye, very myopic patient. So at the beginning, we're going to measure out and get a mental idea of where we want the capsorexis centered. I want to make a 5 to 5.5 millimeter capsorexis. And remember, our forceps are marked off at 2.5 and, and 5 millimeters from the tip. Now, there are many brands of forceps that have this type of marking on the tip. You can even mark your own. You can use a disposable steel keratome and under the microscope make scratches or etch a mark at the two and a half and five millimeter points. You don't have to buy my forceps, I promise. If you want to know which forceps I'm using, it's on my Cataract Coach website. Click on the link of About Dr. Devgan and click on the sublink of Instruments. So there's the capsorexis. We'll do some gentle hydro dissection here. We're going to speed up the video and show it at uh, many times normal speed. There's the nucleus partially prolapsed up through the capsular bag. And then we're going to just chop it and remove it, emulsify it quite easily. And this is going to go very rapidly. Now, be very cautious in these eyes. These eyes that are very myopic have more risks of complications, such as retinal detachment, of course. These eyes are also more likely to develop other retinal issues. They can have issues in the macula, maybe be more prone to cystoid macular edema in the post op period. And even these eyes are a little bit more difficult in their lens calculations. Remember, in these eyes, you don't want to aim for absolute plano because you may end up with a hyperopic result. You're much better off aiming for a slight bit or even a mild bit of myopia. There's filling the capsule bag with our viscoelastic to expand it. And you can see there's a really nice round capsular axis. And we're going to put the lens in the eye. First, we need to slightly enlarge the incision here. We'll get the diamond keratome one more time and slightly open the incision. This patient also happens to have astigmatism at that meridian against the rule. And that incision is going to actually help the patient. So here's the three-piece lens. As it's going in the eye, remember, it can twist in the injector. So let's make sure it goes in appropriately. The leading haptic should come out in the orientation of the number 7. So in my mind, I'm thinking 7. Let me see it look like a 7. That's correct. And that'll go inside the capsule bag in good position. And we're taking our time to deliver the lens slowly and very controlled. And now the trailing haptic... We can dial in the capsule bag. It should look like the capital letter L. So 7 and L. And so the IOL as a whole has an optic that looks like a reverse of the letter S, not the letter S. S is for a stupid mistake, and I don't want to make a stupid mistake. So there you go. You see the lens. And even though the IOL power is so low, remember this is a meniscus lens. There's a video on that on Cataract Coach. Check it out. But with the meniscus lens, it's very thick. Look at the thick edge of that lens. So we'll go behind the IOL optic. Let's remove viscoelastic from the capsule bag. And let's finish up this case here. In this patient, we were aiming for a post-op goal of about minus 2 per the patient's request. And as someone who has a, a slight bit of myopia myself, I can tell you that is a blessing to have a, a wide range of near or intermediate vision. So now you can see there's the capsorexis edge overlapping the optic very nicely, beautifully centered as well. And so seal up our incision here. Notice how we don't let the AC collapse during the case. The incisions are very well constructed, and when we come out of the eye with the eye handpiece or the phaco handpiece, we keep the anterior chamber formed and don't let it collapse. That barotrauma may put the patient at higher risk for retinal attachment, so we want to avoid that. And that looks great. A little angle sweep to remove viscoelastic, and we can seal this up and be done. So let's take a look at the very end. Here's a picture with an overlay. We ended up with an 8 millimeter dilation, a 6 millimeter optic, as you know. And then the rex has turned out to be about 5.3 millimeters as measured at the end of the case. So exactly in the middle of our range of 5 to 5.5. Five Again, it's a big eye. It has a white to white of 12.6 millimeters. And this patient had a beautiful outcome and very happy.
Be sure to check out our teaching website, cataractcoach.com. So much great material, more than you'll find here on the YouTube videos. In particular, if you don't know what a meniscus lens is, you better learn. Go to cataractcoach.com and the search box, enter meniscus or lens geometry, and you'll learn. Thanks for watching.